Good evening, everybody. Hello. I'm watching in the chat room as well. I hope you all can hear me well. Let me just get a, a little bit of a technical check from you. I like to make sure you can all hear everything. Yeah. Um, so, it's uh, Sunday. It's 8 o'clock. I'm Andy, Smoke to Vape. Hopefully you can hear me. Good. Yes. Good. Okay. I'm going to go for it then. Right, well welcome to the show, welcome to Vaporshows.tv, it's Sunday, it's 8 o'clock, um, it's been lovely and sunny where I live today, yeah, I hope it has where you are as well, and uh, thanks for joining us on Vapor Trails TV tonight, and uh, yeah, so uh, let's get on with it, shall we? Um, normally, I would play in the titles, so I'm going to do that right now. See, I was trying to be clever, trying to be clever with the big Vapor Trails TV thing over there, over there, but bit me, bit me in the ass. Um, right, so tonight, fun pack show, I hope, um, I have got, uh, we're going to do the giveaway tonight of the, uh, the Reva kit um, from Misty Liquids. And uh, yeah, so that that'll be good. If you've entered on UKV, entries are closed now. Uh, the the total number has been calculated. And uh, just have a look at how many we've got. We got um, fifty eight. Why? Well, hey hey hey! Excellent. <laughs> I hope there's fifty eight. Anyway, otherwise that's going to be very embarrassing. No, I'm sure there are fifty eight. Thank you very much, everybody, for taking the time to enter. And uh, what else have we got coming up on the show? We have got. Now I went. Uh, I'm off work at the moment, so it's a bit bit strange. I sort of lose track of where the weekends are. Um, so a couple of days ago, went away for a one day break and um, climbed a lot of hills. So in the style of Mr. Kitson, I went for a long walk, and uh, you know it just made me think about you know being being a, a, a vapor compared to being um, a user of combustion. You know, so uh, my lung capacity has definitely increased. So uh, there's a little bit of VT about the sort of health impacts of using an e-cig. And uh, we've got a, a, a nice chat with uh, somebody you might recognise, um, a, a lovely guy called Kev who runs Vapor's Place. And uh, I had a little chat with him and uh, you can learn a little bit more about what he gets up to and what he does. Also, uh, not coming up in the show, but last night we were on uh, Vape TV. So uh, that was good fun again, and uh, we did two hours. Um, the time zones were a little bit cockeyed, so uh, we ended up doing seven till nine their time, which was um, midnight to two our time. So uh, that'll be, no doubt, there'll be a highlight show of that soon. And that was good fun. And um, right, then I've got a, a juice review, but I won't tell you what it is yet. There's little clues throughout the show, so uh, we'll be doing that as well. And... Um, and then at the end we'll be doing the giveaway. So hopefully that's enough to fill an hour. Certainly hope so. Yeah, anyway, so um, let me get on with it and uh, go to this uh, little VT I've prepared for you um, about uh, sort of, you know, just walking about and enjoying uh, an electronic cigarette. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I don't know how if you can hear this, but um, we are in Charminster. We are fossil hunting while using the 
um, metal detector as well, trying to find stuff. I haven't found anything at the moment. And a bit of blue glass. So once again you find me using the GGTS with the UFS. Um, it's just what I take out and about, but what I'm going to concentrate talking about now is the fact that it's a totally wicked 36 milligram Marlborough. Now, that seems to my, be my like go-to juice whenever I go out because I like the flavour. It's pretty hard hitting, so I don't have to be puffing on it all the time. And um, yeah, it's it doesn't really taste like a Marlborough, but it's sort of sweet, slightly, very, very slightly nutty, and I really like it. Slight snag, um, try to get to the fossily bit, but there uh, seems to be a river in the way. As a smoker, 18 months ago this would have been impossible for me. I've just climbed up a massive hill and um, as I said 18 months ago, smoker, I would have been wheezing, coughing and everything. So no doubt that vaping has improved my lung capacity. You know, um, as anybody who smoked for a long period of time will have known, you know, it does affect you very quickly and I smoked for like 13 years. So. This is, this is my proof that this is doing me no harm whatsoever. If anything, my health has increased. So it's just a healthier way of, of getting your nicotine. Just got back from my little walking trip, my one day mini holiday break thing, and uh, there was an envelope waiting for me on the mat. Some would say the contents of this envelope is pure evil. Others would say it's delightful. It's divided. Vapors around the world. Find out in a minute what's in the envelope. See, you don't get drama like that anywhere else, do you? That's um, something else. Yeah, you'll be able to find out what that juice is. Some may be able to guess if you follow me on Twitter, what I've been after, and I've, I've long last got some. Um, I saw in the chat that, uh, just a question as to what that juice was, and it was totally wicked, 36 milligram Marlboro. Um, I really enjoy it. Um, you know, it's a, it's a good tobacco flavour, uh, but, you know, nothing tastes like an analogue, but uh, who would want to after, after a certain amount of time? Yeah, so a good fun couple of days out, and really, honestly, you know, compared to analogs, wow, um, lung capacity has has it has increased greatly. Yeah, so there we are. Right now, um, as if you've seen uh, a show of mine, a couple. Of, I'm just going to vape. I haven't had. A, I'm. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. Lovely. Uh, that review is coming up shortly. Anyway, moving on. Um, I gave a a kit away to a mate of mine, uh, Steve. Um, it was on the pre a couple of shows ago, and uh, I haven't got an update with him. But I've been sort of introducing people to e-cigs over the seems loads and loads of people over the past three or four weeks. So um, I just sort of thought. You know, there is an awful lot of information out there, and you can tune in and watch VaporTrails.tv, naturally, and all the other great resources, but it's a massive, massive task to get, you know, I want to start vaping, weird shadows going on here, um, it's, a, it's a massive task to find the information you want 
to start quickly. Like Steve said in that VT that I played in a couple of weeks ago, he found the websites a little bit confusing and a bit, you know, all over the place. If you're looking for a starter kit, where would you start? Well, I hope this is going to help. Um, I threw together today um, a little VT, um, and the plan is, as I say in the VT, so, you know, uh, I'm going to put this up on YouTube, and if you know somebody who's just starting out, why not ping them the URL and, and let them have a watch, if, you know, or watch this episode of Vapor Trails TV on our catch-up service on the website. Plug over. Here is my part one guide to uh, picking your first e-cig. What is an e-cig? Well, when I'm asked that question, I normally show them one of these. It's a very simple device. It's a atomizer and a battery. So, and it's got a light at the end. Basically, I, you know, it, what, what you do is you suck on it and vapor comes out. What you're about to see is not smoke. It is vapor. That is vapor. Um, the vapor is produced by liquid in here being heated up by an atomizer, by the battery, and then you inhale the vapor and you absorb the nicotine. What is e-juice? Well, good question. Thanks for asking. Uh, e-juice is this stuff right here. It's a, the color can vary, the thickness can vary, but this has got the nicotine in it. The liquid is actually made up of propylene glycol and um, in some cases vegetable glycerin. E-juice means that you can replace your nicotine delivery system. If you're currently a smoker and uh, you choose to use um, tobacco and you choose to combust tobacco then you can switch to, as I certainly did, I switched to vaporizing. Now, vaporizing has its benefits. Um, the vapor does not contain the thousands upon thousands of, of bad chemicals uh, that are created during the combustion process um, when you smoke a traditional cigarette. How long will it last? Well, this is where experience comes in because depending on what device you choose to use as your first device that can vary greatly that is why people use devices like that and people use devices like that and I personally use a device like that because depending on your style of using an electronic cigarette it will vary greatly as a first device I would recommend something like that it's a doesn't look like a cigarette but it screws you screw one of these onto there which is the atomizer it is very straightforward to fill you just take the end cap off what you do is you basically drip 15 to 20 drops into this cartomizer here and you can see that the liquid is seeping into that woolly filler inside that cartomizer so, I think the liquid has now seeped into the cartridge. So I will just put that little that little bung back on the top there. And I'm going to attach it to the the battery here. Screw it in. And you are now ready to use it. So what you need to do is you need to press the button. And take a track. Now you can see compared to that one this one produces a whole heck load more vapor. Now that is because of science. Now I'm not going to go into the science but I'm telling you if you get one of these and you get one of these that is a good first device. Here we are on uh, iVapor. I, I, I frequent their shops quite a lot. They sell a lot of stuff. Now you can see there you know it's all looking fairly familiar now. You've got the battery, you've got the atomizer. Now, if we go on to, you'll see that this is totally wicked, and um, there's there's a huge range of stuff. It can be terribly, 
terribly confusing. I'm confused. Where can I get more information, I hear you say? Well, the forums are a great place to do that. UKVapors.com. Uh, I'll freely admit, when you start, it's confusing. It is a very confusing situation to be in. You want to be good at it straight away. And unlike the analogs, the, the conventional cigarettes, there is a little bit of a learning curve. But I'm telling you, if you, you know, it, once you have found your device that you get on with, stick with it for a bit. Find the juice flavor that you like. Go to the websites, order some samples, check some stuff out. Find your nicotine level as well. There's a whole load of stuff. And if you ever get stuck, UK Vapors is the place to go and find somebody who knows the answer. We're all on there. We're all there to help. We've all been beginners, newbies, you know, we've all been there. So there are a whole load of helpful people out there who want to answer questions and who want to see you have the most satisfying electronic cigarette use you possibly can. So as you can see, there's loads of information out there. There's loads of devices out there. So the key bit of, of sort of advice I would give anybody who's thinking about making the switch to electronic cigarettes I would say do your research first. Watch YouTube videos, hang out on forums, ask the questions. There are a whole bunch of people on forums just like UK Vapors. There are, there are forums all around the world. Go and find one that suits you. Check it out and uh, ask questions. Find the device that's going to work for you and get vaping. May the vape be with you. Well, there we go. No, I didn't make myself thinner in that VT. Um, it cropped it strangely. There were supposed to be little words at the, the, the bottom of it, but it cut them off. Anyway, so there we go. I know many of you watching are experienced, worldly vapors, but that, you know, if, if you know somebody who wants to, yeah, point them in our direction. You know, we're here for everybody of different, different, different backgrounds and different experiences. We're here to cater for everybody. <laughs> um, now, I got a question via Twitter this week, so I'm going to answer it. And strangely enough, I'm looking at the chat, and um, do do do, just looking at the chat. Now, somebody, uh, uh, somebody asked if they, if if anybody has tried Espresso Mocha. Um, some I don't I can't see on the chat who said that uh, it seems to have vanished. Um, people are talking about end juice. End juice. Um, I've got some right here. Funny that isn't it? it's funny how things work. Um, now the question via Twitter was, do darker juices gunk up your atomizer? Now this is probably this is probably the darkest juice I've got, and as you can see there. It's I, I I I enjoy this flavor. Now, I haven't found that darker juices gunk up quicker. Um, I certainly noticed that it it leaves a residue, but I haven't noticed a a life expectancy length of time an atomizer will work because of the color of the juice. Um, I was just wondering if the the chat room. Um, has anything to add to that really if anybody has uh, has any any further experiences of dark juice so we can put this Twitter question to bed um, I, I you know I, I end juice I rate this great an espresso mocha for vapor you you know who you are yeah I almost said it um, that uh, hold on, uh, I know a lot to think dark juices kill atties. Well, I mean, that was from five. I tend to think that well, I, in my I've had loads of five tens, loads of atomizers, and I can count on one hand the amount that have died, dead, kaput. You know, I fried a couple on higher voltages, but they all tend to keep going. And on if you do get a gunky deposit in your atomizer, then you know, I tend to, to boil them once in a blue moon, 
Um, but, you know, what does everybody else say? Willow, fairy, most of my juices are dark and I haven't killed any atties with it. Right, you know, uh, if, the, if the vapor and the flavor and the throat hit trails off, I just boil the little suckers. You know, stick them in some hot boiling water for a couple of minutes, um, stick them on a, a colander over a radiator, let them dry out overnight, and uh, to be honest, they're, they're, it gives them a new lease of life. As I said, I can count the amount of atomizers on one hand that have actually kaputted. So, good. Yeah. So there we go. I hope that um, that helps the uh, the lovely person who uh, got in touch with us on Twitter. If you would like to follow us on Twitter, you can do so. Our uh, Twitter address is at Vapor Trails TV. We'd love for you to follow us, um, and uh, you can find out. You know, drop in and have a chat. Uh, all the Vapor Trails team, apart from the Welsh one, I believe. Is on um, is on the Twitter. Oh, cat! I don't think cat's on either. But we, you know, come on, cat! Come on, come on, come on over to the Twitter. Come on. Right. So I'll get rid of that now. That's the little Twitter thing done. So uh, yeah, if you've got any questions for us, Twitter's a good place to get us. Obviously, on the VaporTrails.tv website is another good place to get hold of us. And uh, yeah. So uh, just. Uh, Having a look at the chat, what's everybody's chatting about? Uh, I've got five mils of PB roast coffee, coffee which is black and really strong. If anybody wants it, let me know via PM. See, friendly people, vapors, friendly people. Yeah, the espresso mocha, just a quick one. Um, uh, it's it's end juice, really accurate with their flavors, flavors, and uh, just dropped it. Uh, I'm not going to vape it because I haven't got. Have I got? Have I got a five? Five ten. Oh, let's do it in this. Let's do a quick impromptu for vapor. R R R R. Uh, let's just do a quick, quick go of this. So this is um, he's just ordered some. And he wants a wants an opinion on it. So uh, this is thirty two milligrams. Um, I'll just drop a couple of drips. This is actually a tornado tank that I took the um, inner workings out of, and it's 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 very nice to drip on. Espresso mocha. It's espresso. It's a strong coffee flavour with um, a hint of chocolate, and uh, you can't say more than that. Again, for a sweet, sweet flavour, I'm not looking for a massive throat hit, but a 32 milligrams it does give me a fair old whack. Um, accurate. No hint of any sort of odd burning tastes it's it's a sweet it's a, sort of a a mid sweet coffee strong coffee with a, a a sweet after note and i and if you like coffee flavors i think you'll enjoy it i think you will enjoy it i think i've done i've got a youtube video up of of this it goes into more detail but that was just an impromptu little thing from the chat room anyway let's move on we've got lots more stuff um, so that's do dark juices kill your atomizers. The consensus is no. Moving on. Right. La, 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 la. Hold music. Um, a couple of nights ago, um, I got in touch with Kev from Vapor's Place. Uh, if you haven't checked out VP Live, um, it's a podcast. Uh, he interviews people. Um, Dave, the Hi-Fi Stud, myself have been on. Us have been on there. Imeo, uh, Roly Gates. You know, loads of loads of entertaining people on there. Uh, obviously, Dave and I excluded from that. You know, we're not being big headed. Anyway, uh, so I thought it'd be interesting to get Kev and and interview him. So that's what I did, and here it is. What is an e-cig? Well. When I'm asked that question, I normally show them one of these. It's a very simple device. It's fail, fail. They both start the same. No, I'm not going to give you any excuses. I'm just going to click on the thing. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Here it is. Here's Kev from VP Live. It's interesting. I, you know, I've never 
really been interviewed. I'm always interviewing people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, so now, I know they, now when all these people tell me, oh, I feel nervous, I, I know what they mean. <laughs> <laughs>
you know, addicted to nicotine, and I still class myself well and truly as as a smoker. I've just found a, a healthier way to to get my nicotine. And as you said, you know, so eloquently, you know, it's all the it's all everything you love about smoking, but but it's like having your cake and eating it. You know, it's 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 you know, it's it's the perfect thing for a lot of people who. You know, smoking was gonna. If they, if you keep going with smoking, it's gonna kill you. This, you know, isn't right. You, know, you, you made a good point. I agree. You know, I think when you're wanting, a, a lot of people that are quitting are wanting to get off the nicotine. I didn't want to get off the nicotine. No. I still wanted my nicotine. I just didn't want all the stuff that was coming along with it. Exactly. What is um, your favorite atomizer and device at the moment? What are you? What have you got in your hand right now? At the moment, it is a Rio Mini with a Cisco low res 306 and a Canon drip tip. This I use I used to use it all the time. I've been using it ever since I got it. It's probably been about a month and a half now, maybe 2 months. I just recently bought an Alpha and I've been using this and this is nice too. When I want to drip pretty much this is my device, the Alpha and uh but this is what I use 90% of the time. I I just I love it. I love it just feeds and the battery life's good and it's a nice size and it's portable and I've dropped this thing and you just can't break it. I mean, this is really what uh, what is my favorite mod right now at this time. Cool. But as Rolly Gates said, you know, he said something very interesting. He said, someone asked him, he said, what's your favorite mod? He said, well, you know, my favorite mod is going to be my next mod because that's always your favorite mod. You know, whatever your next mod is, is your favorite mod. So... I thought that was that that was a a pretty neat answer, so I like that answer too. So at, at the moment, it's this, but who knows what it'll be? I'm waiting for the solar mod. Someone over there in the UK made the solar mod. Did you see that? No, I haven't seen that yet. No, it's 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 a guy. I wish I remembered his name. He's over in the UK, and it's it's like the shape of of an iPhone, kind of about the same size, and it uses batteries, but the whole front is solar panels. Brilliant. So it, it it'll off not just sunlight but like you know light bulb light any sort of light light from a tv any sort of light hitting it it's always charging so it's like you never have to charge the batteries every wow. time it's, it's just charging i thought that was the coolest thing yeah sounds brilliant just walk us through I, I haven't seen i haven't seen the alpha just for people who haven't seen one including myself um oh. just walk us through it what is it it's pretty much a smaller version of the omega it's uh as you can see, that's about the size of it. It's nice and small. Uses a, a fourteen five hundred battery. Uh, you know, goes off just like the Omega does. The same type of switch. It's just really a smaller version of the Omega, and uh, it, it's nice. I mean, it, it's it's Chad, the one who makes uh, the Silver Bullet, and you know, BB and all that made it. And it's it's just a really nice mod. I like the size. It's got like a matte finish to it. I like the feel of it, and uh, it's just a great little mod for dripping. See, there's the bottom. It's got the A on the bottom. Mm. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I use a low-res Cisco 306 on it, and it's just, it's really nice. I like the size. It's very small. You can put it in your pocket, and it doesn't go off in your pocket or anything. The uh, the way you push it down, you, you know, you do have to give it a good amount of oomph. Yeah. I to really push it down. It's not very easy, so you can put it in your pocket without it going off. And it's just really a smaller uh, Omega is all it is, but very, very nice. In fact, out of all the mods at VapeFest, this is the one I ended up buying. I was really impressed by it. Just give us a quick little rundown of VapeFest. I, I checked it out on Vape TV, I was, and I listened to your show that you did live from, uh, from Philadelphia. It sounded like a fantastic time. Did you have a good time there? Oh, I had a great time. It really was awesome. There was more people there than any other VapeFest. I think they said there was about 250 to 260 people. Um, it, it was just really a good time. I mean, uh, I got to meet a, a whole new group of people I haven't met. You know, what's so cool about Vape Fest is, is you, you talk to all these people on the forums and you're actually getting to meet them and hang out with them. And, and the there's a lot of vendors there. We got to see a lot. We got to see the Eclipse and, you know, a lot of the new products that were going to be coming out. And what was great about Vape Fest is, you know, you have all these vendors there, Right. And, you know, in a sense, they're kind of all in competition. They're all business, they're all, you know, but they all just got along. They were sharing tables. Um, Adam from VaporCast was telling me that they were going to do a spot where um, VaporCast store was going to do a review of eLiquid Planet's juice, and then eLiquid Planet was going to do a review of their juice. I mean, just stuff like that. It was yeah, really yeah, yeah. 
I mean, just in this, you feel this love in the room, and ev if anybody has has had any beef, it just all goes away. Vape Fest, everybody's friends. It was really, really a great time. I love Vape Fest. I mean, they're they, they're just the the gatherings are so much fun. It was really, really a good time, and it was really great to meet everybody. And we had somebody from the UK come over. We had somebody from Denmark come over. We had somebody from we had somebody drive from Canada. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I had him on my show. I said, you drove from Canada. He goes, yeah. He was so excited to be there. He said, I said, was it worth it? He goes, absolutely. Very, very nice. Cool. Yeah, because, I mean, um, speaking of vape fest, that I went to the uh, liquor store there. Went to go get some beer, and uh, I love Newcastle. And I don't know if you have them over over there, but over here. They sell these kegs. They're right. like little mini kegs. And they sell Heineken kegs here. And I, I went to the liquor store there outside of Philly, and they had Newcastle kegs. Whoa. And I'm like, oh, my God. I've never seen one before. I'm like, I'm, I'll show you. I have it right here. It's a cool <laughs> Look at this. It's a little Newcastle keg. Way Newcastle brown <laughs> ale. Wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Isn't that great? Oh, I... I love Newcastle, and I said sold. I said I had to get a couple of those. What milligram strength do you currently vape, and um, would you ever consider switching to zero, Nick? Um, I currently vape 12, 11, 12, you know, around there. Uh, would I go to zero? No. <laughs> I love my nicotine. I, I don't think I, – I, sometimes I do eight because there's some vendors that don't carry 11 or 12, and it's either 16 – or eight. So instead of going to the 16, I just go to the eight because I chain vape all day. I'm constantly vaping. And if I go any higher than 12, I'll get that nicotine headache at the end of the day. And, uh, you know, instead of going to a higher strength where I'm vaping, la I'd rather just stick at a 11 or 12 and be able to vape all day. So I'm, I'm stuck. I know I'm stuck at 11, 12. It's, you know, not going to go up, and I really don't see me going down to zero. <laughs> we we don't have as many vendors as you do in the states. Have you ever ordered any any equipment or any juice from a UK vendor? Ah, uh, yes, I used to order when I uh, probably three months into vaping. I used to constantly order from Liberty Flights. I loved Liberty Flight. They used to make this uh, tea juice and all their juices. I Abe is a great guy. And I used to, I've ordered from Totally Wicked before. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any of the UK vendors I ordered from. I think that's just it. Liberty Flights and Totally Wicked. Blacksmith Pro, actually, um, we were chatting while he was at Vape Fest. And he mentioned he'd got, he, he'd got some uh, honeybees. And, mm -hmm. and I was keen to get hold of some. And he's very kindly sent me a little, little bottle to try out. Uh, what's your opinion if you have tried honeybees? <laughs> I have not tried honeybees. Just the sound makes me not want to try it. <laughs> I'm not really in anything honey or anything like that. I'm just not, it, I, I don't know, I just have no desire to try it. I mean, I just pretty much stick to tobacco juices, um, fruit flavored juices, you know, grape, watermelon, stuff like that. So I can't comment because I've never tried it, but I've heard good things about it. <laughs> It, it seems to have divided the community. I mean, some people say it smells like old socks. Some people, you know, they just can't, you know, I, I, I ask one person, they say it's great. I mean, I know Grim Green, he loves it. Um, but uh, you talk to, like, Vaping ba Valerie or somebody like that, and, and, and you know, there's a, it's really split the uh, split the community in half. I'm, I'm going to try it. I've, I've used all my self-control, and I, I haven't tried it yet. And I'm going to do it live on my show on Sunday and uh, give my verdict on it and see if I can understand it, if it's going to be an all-day vape for me. But I do like the sort of sweeter juices, so I'm hoping it's going to be a winner. Well, I agree with you. Uh, either people seem to like it or they seem to hate it. What one piece of advice would you give to the new vapor? Uh, one piece of advice I would give is research. Don't make the mistake I made and buy the first thing you see. Because... You know, I know there's that point where everybody's going to come to where they see an e-cigarette for the first time and they get excited and they just come across the first ad they see and they buy and they usually get pay too much or they get something they're not happy with. People kind of jump to the gun and they'll buy a, you know, a crappy e-cigarette and then they go, well, this thing sucks and they give up on vaping. 
which is a shame. So you really, really need to do your research before you just go out and buy. And then the other thing is, don't go buy a silver bullet for your first. I mean, the silver bullet's a great mod, but you don't want that to be your first experience with vaping. You know, that's that's something down the road. You know, stick with like an ego or, you know, something that, that's good, but something simple. But def definitely research. That would be my my advice. If you could be any animal, what would you be and why? Oh my God, if I could be any animal, oh, I could answer that. I'd be a penguin. I'd be a penguin because penguins just seem like they have a good time, man. They just kind of, you know, they're swimming, they're running around, they're doing their thing. They can like run real fast and slide on their stomachs. I don't know. I've just always had a fascination with penguins. I mean, if I could have a pet penguin, I would. I just love penguins. And, uh, you know, I guess it'd have to be a penguin. <laughs> They're always That's very they're always very sharply dressed as well, aren't they? They are. They're all they look, they look yes, they're always in their tuxes, you know, they're always uh looking good and yeah. you know, they seem like they're always having fun, you know. They just seem like they all get together, they have a good time, they're very communal, they're you know, they all are always together and I don't know, I just I love penguins. I I would definitely have to be a penguin. Well there you go, we'd be a penguin. And who wouldn't? You know, I think I, I don't know what animal. I don't know what animal would the chat room be. Uh, Rusty says he'd be a panda. Um, I think I'd be a cat. My cat has a great life. You know, just meow, walk in, food, walk out. Be a cat. You know, I think I'd be a cat. Um, anyway, so in that, I said I was going to review the the honeybees live tonight for the first time. Hmm. I sort of, uh, I couldn't resist the honeybee. I couldn't resist it. So I, I, I did have a go at it yesterday. And um, I'm still going to do the review live. It's an interesting flavor. But when I vaped it in the house, um, my wife came downstairs and said, what's that smell? You know, and I said, oh, that's interesting. What do you think it smells like? And she said, uh, it smells like when you take a big sniff out of a daffodil. So, anyway, so I'm vaping it right now on a uh, low resistance 306, a Cisco, on the BB, freshly charged battery. It's a very interesting honey flavour. Well named. Um, but this sort of after smell, sort of, uh, I wanted, you know, I wanted to know what other people thought it would smell like or thought it smelt like. So um, I went and and asked somebody um, who I trust their opinion, and here it is. Hello, Andy here. I'm just out and about um, taking the kids and my lovely wife to see Grandma, who's just moved nearby where I live in Clevedon. And um, I'm trying this new juice that Blacksmith Pro, Pro, Blacksmith Pro kindly sent me. Uh, he picked some up, I think, at the Philadelphia Vape Fest. He sent me some honeybees. It's a flavor that I'm, I've got in this uh, 306 and um, from what I've heard, lots of people don't like it. Some people love it. Um, some people say it's got a funny smell. So, who best to ask than your mother to get an honest opinion of what this stuff smells like? Can you confirm you are my mother? <laughs> yes, I am your mother. <laughs> um, this that I've got in here, I'm going to waft some in your direction. You've got to tell me what it smells like. Okay. you do it again? It's not very strong at the moment. Sort of chocolatey, burnt chocolate. Oh no, 
There's another smell coming along here, which I can't identify. <laughs> Rotten shoes or something. <laughs> Rotten shoes. <laughs> the, the burnt chocolate was the first first yeah, one. Yeah, but then sort of rotten shoes. But then it went nasty. So there we go. Honeybees, according to my mother, smells like sweet chocolate and then old shoes. What do I think about it? Wow. You have to keep watching. I'm going to do a live review, live on Vapor Trails TV. <laughs> Nothing quite like a sunny day. So she thought it smelt like rotten shoes. Let me, okay, let me officially, I've dragged this out long enough, and I'm sorry, but, um, you know, it's a big deal. I, I, I was waiting, I'm waiting months to get hold of some of this stuff. Uh, I like the sweeter flavours, you all know that. Uh, this is 24 milligrams uh, honeybees. It's a PG VG mix, 80% um, PG. 20 VG, so it's not going to do funny things to me, so that's all right. And uh, as I said in several VTs, uh, that Blacksmith Pro, uh, a lovely guy, check him out. He's on Twitter as well, and he's a host on Vape TV, and he's a fellow UK eSig user, and uh, he's been adopted by the Vape TV lot, and he went to the Philadelphia Vape Fest, and he picks them up, and he sent me a little bit. So here we go, 24 milligram, honeybees, here we go. Honey nut cornflakes um, to start with. It's honey, it's sweet, it's oaty. Um, it's got a sort of cereal type. It's like um, honey nut Cheerios. Vapor production is really good. Very little throat hit considering it is um, 24 milligrams. But again, I've said it. Before and I'll say it again, for a sweeter vape, it's a throat hit isn't top of my list really. Hmm. Um Is it an all day vape for me? I would say yes it is, except the one note that it is slightly antisocial because several people have said that it smells like bad things. Now, um, I noticed in the chat room, somebody said that it, it's um, stale sweat. It's basically, there is a sweaty note on the, uh, the, the smell of the vapor. Um, most of the other stuff I vape, everybody says it smells like chocolate or it smells like, um, it smells like this tastes. Um, but I don't know what's going on with, with what's happening with the exhale um, and the actual vapor in the air that gives it that stink. Um, but it does honk. It really does honk. Hmm. Would I buy some? Yes, I'm going to. Um, I'm going to put an order in. Um, I'm going to get some. It is an all-day vape for me. Hey, you know, so what? It smells like old socks. But um, it tastes really nice. If you like sweeter flavours, you're, uh, I wouldn't say it's overly nutty, not like a 555. I would say it's, it's, it's sort of like a sweet peanutty type taste to it. Um, but not like peanut butter. It is unique. It is unique. And I would give it a go if you can get some. Uh, where you can get some, 
is uh, let me just show you here. Um, I've got honeybees. It is from uh, available from digitalsigs.com. Now, if I take us over to the website, uh, we will see here we are on digitalsigs.com, and it is nearly twenty dollars for thirty mil. Um, it is it is available in various strengths. Uh, the one I'm looking at and the one I, I've just reviewed is 24 milligrams. Um, that's as high as it goes from what I can see. If I go to the next product, um, yeah, the next one is medium and uh, it seems to be a PG VG mix all the way through it. So, yes, there we go. It's uh, digitalsigs.com, uh, $20, nearest damn it. So, uh, delivered. Quite an expensive purchase, but I would say I would say give it a go if you like the sweeter flavours. So there we are. There we are. Um, I can get rid of that now, but it is available from digitalsigs.com. And you've all met my mother now. We're a little bit closer. I feel like family. You know, my mum did put on a posh voice for that. She doesn't normally sound like that. Um, it's her telephone voice. Um, we always joke that we can hear the uh, the sort of distant barking of corgis when she's on the telephone. Somebody, uh, who, even to like the bank, she puts on the telephone voice. It's amazing. Right, so that is honeybees. Um, I I will be purchasing some. It's a good good juice. And thank you, Blacksmith Pro, for sending me some. Um, no chance of the vapor trails lot getting any of this stuff. I'm hanging on to it. <laughs> no, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. I've enjoyed trying it. And uh, on a 306. Really, really nice stuff. Okay, next up, we will do the giveaway. Yes, it's um, mistyliquid.co.uk kindly gave me one kit to review and one kit to, to give away. Um, 58 of you uh, entered on the ukvapors.com forum post that I put up and uh, you can win this kit that is just here and in the kit uh, you will get um, a standard two batteries 650 milliamp hour batteries two atomizers and a cone now I've tried pretty much every um, atomizer I own, every 510 atomizer, and they all screw on fine. It has got, I will just take this out here, it has got the, it is gold, and it has got the bottom glowy button. Um, I haven't charged them up, uh, but they look pretty charged. Uh, you get obviously an instruction manual, now it says Ego on there, but it's not, it's a Reva. Um, you get, when you, when you order one, you're supposed to get a charger, a wall charger. Now, it didn't include one with the review kits, but um, I'm going to give the person who wins this giveaway um, one of my very own USB chargers, just so you got the complete kit. Right, now, here we go. Uh, let's take us back over to the website. Now, I've got the random.org website loaded up here. And if I click on that, it'll appear. There it is. So, uh, there we are. Right. Now, if I zoom this in a little bit so we can find out who the lucky winner will be. 58 entries. 58 entries. And I'm going to click that generate button now, and the winning post will appear magically. There were no double posts this week, so thank you very much for your cooperation. Brilliant. So, generate now. And it's 25. So now if I go over to UK Vapors and go back up to 25, which is probably on page 2, we will find out the winner. It's Crundy. Crundy, you have won the Reva kit from Misty Liquids. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. I will send you a PM straight away. Okay, so there we go. Hey, fantastic. 
Right, I've got approximately six minutes left, so I'm going to go back over to the, the chat. Congratulations, Kundi. Um, I will send you a PM. I've already said that. But I'm going to go over to the chat now and, and sort of open it up to you guys. I'm, I'm looking at you. Um, I was just wondering if you've got any questions that you'd like to ask me while I'm on. <laughs> and uh, there we go. Uh, I'll just have a scroll through. Crundy or Bundy? It was Crundy. Uh, oh, don't do this to me. It was number 25. It was number 25. Yeah, Crundy. C-R-U-N-D-Y. Number 25. And he just typed in yo. And he's won a uh, mistyliquid.co.uk kit. So Rusty has asked why the beard. Uh, Rusty, it's because I don't shave regularly. And it just tends to appear out of my face. There we go. Any more questions that aren't related to facial hair? <laughs> um, Mighty Mouse, will you be getting a haircut? Yes, I will. I will be getting a haircut shortly. Uh, that is why I'm wearing a hat. Okay, Dan3730 has asked, can you put a 306 in a UFS? You can put a 306 in a UFS, but it won't do anything. Um, the reason why a UFS works is because, there's a UFS just there, the atomizer um, runs into the mouthpiece, and it's got O-rings and everything like that, and, it, and it, it's a solid seal. So when you've got everything closed off and no airflow, you can't draw through it. So basically, the, the, the atomizer is one with the mouthpiece. If you did put a 306 in there, it would create vapor, but if you suck it, um, the juice will go into the mouthpiece and you'll be, it basically turns it into a straw. So um, the only way I can think of putting a 306 in a UFS is some sort of sleeve, but you know that would. Pro but to be honest, open the earring. A two ohm Cisco in a UFS is spectacular. So I hear I've got a two ohm E small in here, and it's still great. But um, Hi-Fi and I have ordered some um, low resistance um, Cisco 2 ohm 510s and I'm looking forward to trying it because Hi-Fi said they're absolutely spectacular. Mighty Mouse has said um, get a 306 cartomizer and remove the polyfill. Now that's a good idea. I, I, to be honest I didn't even know a 306 cartomizer existed um, that I, I haven't seen those on any websites. If anybody knows who sells those, I'd love to know. So stick that up on the. Um... Yeah, it does. It does work. Okay, so you can put a 306 cartomizer in, but uh, you know a standard exposed wick 306 won't work too good. Um, clean a map tank, Andy is the next question from Vapor Roper. Uh, I haven't got a map, tam a map tank um, and I don't think any of the Vapor Trails team have one yet. Uh, I think some of us are working on that situation. So um, I've heard the map tanks are leaky if you lay them down but uh, other than that they're just massive CE2s. It might have something to do with the Vapor Trails lot on the whole not enjoying a CAC to experience that much so um, we are keen to try one and um, as soon as one of us gets hold of it we'll we'll give it a go and we'll tell you how to clean it so uh, Vapor Roper has said uh, that he's never had a leakage so that's good what I've heard is because they're handmade um, they, they tend to be a little bit inconsistent with the tolerances so they, they tend to leak all over the shop Anyway, I thank you. I thank you for your input in the last section of the show. And um, coming up next, it's uh, Mr. Kitson with his vaping toolbox. So thank you all for watching.
and uh, I'll catch you next time. Next Sunday, it's me, but next up, Mr. Kitson. Thanks for watching.